Hello, hello, happy Friday everybody. Welcome to Friday Sews. Oh my gosh. Well, I have a lot to share, all sewing pretty much, because that's been consuming my time. And I wanted to say before I even do anything, thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. You guys are the best. I really felt so supported by all your wonderful comments on my crazy idea that I could make my own pattern and put it out there for the world. And you guys just made me feel like, yeah, go for it. And oh, that just means the world to me. I can't even tell you what that vote of confidence meant. So I think the first thing I want to tell you is where I'm at in my project. I have finished my instructions and uh, I'm sending them to my proofreader, i.e. my mother. <laughs> She's going to proofread it for me. She's very good at that. Thanks, Mom. And uh, so once she proofreads it for typos, uh, then I'm just going to add the pictures. I'm working on them halfway through taking pictures of each step. And uh, then, um, then it's time to start, you know, putting together the Etsy store. Hopefully I'm like a couple of weeks out. That's what I'm hoping. I still don't have the pattern back from the pattern guy. I made a couple changes. So he's still, I'm waiting on him to finish. And um, it's just so close. Thank you so much to all of you who supported me on that and are supporting me on that. It's just, it's a dream now at this point. It's kind of, I'm slogging through the hard parts. To me, this is the hard part, thinking it up and coming up with the idea. And you know, that was the fun part. Uh, I've made the dress many times. I will show you all of them. And uh, you know, I just keep thinking it needs tweaking, it needs tweaking. But really, actually, I start like looking for problems that aren't even there. I just, you know, want it to be just so. But then I start thinking it is just so. Leave it alone. Stop it already. Um, but it's had a lot of changes. And I feel like it's good. It's good. I'm ready to move on to my next pattern, which is the leggings. And I'm going to order the pattern since there's a waiting list for him to get to it. So I'm going to order the pattern and start working on that next. And the two will go really good together. Um, I kind of just thought I needed a break from my hoodie dress. I just kept making it and making it. And I still need to make it a couple more times for pictures and a so long video. But uh, I'll have a bunch of them and I wear them, so it's okay. I took a break from hoodie dresses to make this again. Do you remember last week? Was it last week where I showed this? I actually think this is a great pattern. I was really iffy the first time. Then I modeled it for you and I liked it a lot better. And then it, it just hit me. This is a great way to, you know, forget the, the jacket. It's an easy jacket. Just forget that part and think about how it's a great way to display fabric you really want to use. And so I pulled this piece out. I absolutely love this. And it made a cute jacket. And let me show you. So I wanted to show you how easy it is. So I set a timer, like a um, stopwatch, and um, it stopped at two hours and 35 minutes. And that was from laying my fabric on this table. I started the stopwatch. So I laid out the pattern. I cut the pattern, sewed the pattern, made the thing on, all the way to the last clipping of the thread on the hem. And I stopped the stopwatch and it was two hours and 35 minutes and I didn't hurry. And I made a big mistake uh, in the back. <laughs> I didn't mark it. Uh, sometimes I just get lazy. Oh, I know how it's going to go. And so I sewed it. I sewed the wrong thing together. And I had to undo that and fix it. And I was like, dang it, I was timing myself. But I didn't want to, I just wanted to be honest with you that it, that is even including a huge mistake. So if you have wanted to do this pattern, a lot of you said you have it. It's easy. I think I want to do it again with um, coordinating fabrics like they're doing here. It's a, it would be a great scrap buster. Although the, um, the bottom half, that takes a lot of fabric. Actually, e each piece is kind of big. It wouldn't be for small scraps. Flounce. So one and a half at 45, one and three eighths at 60, and then the top is one and seven eighths. So you could do some, if you had some big, big remnants from other projects, and I might have pieces that big. So we'll see, but um, this was interesting. Finding the right, I did this all on the serger except for the hems. Pretty much that's it. And this time I did not make my own 
um, bias tape. I used um, regular package kind and it was really easier. Um, I thought it was really pretty when I made my own bias tape, but it was such a pain to cut this slinky fabric that I didn't even attempt this time and I was really happy with it. I like, actually I like it better. It really holds its shape better. And the other thing was which color to use on the inside. Since I made this with a serger, um, I had to decide what color and I thought it had a lot of black in it so I thought black but then I did black and it, it wasn't good and I held up white and white was going to stand out so this is actually tan and it disappears um, another thing I was going to say is the fabric from the first time I made this jacket was really pretty inside and out and this wasn't so I hesitated but I still think it looks good what do you think should it be only fabrics that look good on the inside too or does it matter? I'm kind of thinking it doesn't matter, but it's kind of nice too when you can when you can see it kind of inside looks the same. Hard to find fabrics like that to be honest with you, and so I had picked that one on purpose for that reason. So kind of just life. Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed with my pattern and it's like I text a friend and I text my mom, you know, I have my texting buddies and they're like, what are you doing today? I'm like, I'm going to work on my pattern. I'm going to work on my pattern. It was funny because um, my girlfriend that I talked to, she doesn't sew. So it's kind of like boring for her to hear about it, but my mother does sew and we talked and I got to say all the little details of what I was working on and it was like she was in it with me. <laughs> That's kind of who you are to me. I mean, believe me, not everybody wants to hear this stuff, right? Does that happen to you? Like, nobody wants to hear about, you know, what happened and how you put the, like when I said I put those two pieces together backwards. I mean, only you guys would understand what I'm talking about, right? And, um, yeah, she understands. And so that was really fun. And she wants to help with the project. And, you know, she's excited for me. And um, so that's pretty cool. And my husband does graphics so he's going to do my graphics and um, it's kind of like all in the family <laughs> i've been corresponding with some of you with ideas and i thank you for that and i'm just really excited i'm really excited so thank you again for your support in that and that's where i'm at and i'm just like i have other ideas i want to get on to next and um it's like um i don't know I've always had lots of ideas for it to wear. You know, I think it becomes because I used to be in the fashion business. I don't think I've talked about this. In the 80s, I used to do color analysis. Do you remember that? Winter, summer, autumn, spring. I used to do that. And I used to do um, core wardrobe demonstrations. So I would go into a company and I would do like a dress for success seminar and I would talk about, you know, I, I could do a core wardrobe. I think my core wardrobe had eight pieces that would make 25 outfits, something like that, you know, and I would ha I had a rack and then I would mix and match. And um, one of my best tricks was a dress that was really a top and a skirt that look was out of, like out of this fabric, but it was a top and a skirt, so it looked like a dress, but then you could mix and match it. But that's when you actually like wore suits to work. And uh, once it got casual, I was already kind of on my way out of that business. And I just remember looking in Vogue magazine and um, where'd all the jewelry go? <laughs> like suddenly the jewelry was just gone. It was just like tiny little jewelry and we were used to like really big, really big jewelry, big hair, lots of lots of everything. That was the 80s and um, it was crazy. It was crazy. So uh, I was in two clothes all through my 20s and early 30s uh, up until about 40 I was into clothes like I just love them so much that it's right now kind of fun to have ideas because I think I've had ideas all along of things a way that I wanted things to look and what I wanted them to be but for me it's turned from wanting to be cute which always wasn't comfortable it wasn't always comfortable sometimes it was very uncomfortable to now it can it be cute and comfortable that's all i want that's all i want out of my clothes anymore i don't want to be just comfortable i want to be cute and comfortable both so that's my goal and so um all my ideas are going to be around 
comfortable. Nothing uncomfortable. It's probably my age, but I was always like this. I was always a baby. Like even when I did my seminars, I would always have like every time I bought a pair of high heel shoes, I would buy some kind of flat that was the same. I always carried flats. I didn't. I would wear the high heels just for the seminar, and boom, the flats would come on. I was never good at being uncomfortable. And one of my things I hated the most in my life was pantyhose. And I live in California, so we probably gave them up before anybody else. <laughs> but pantyhose, they just aren't comfortable. Ugh, hate those. But, uh, you know, hey, if it finished an outfit, you got to do it, right? So thank you again for being supportive, and I will keep you updated and um, hopefully getting close to sharing it with you guys. I'm really excited for you to make them. I'm kind of excited and nervous. <laughs> like, I'm excited for you to make my hoodie dress, uh, but I only want to hear good things. <laughs> like, I only want to hear that you like it. Oh my gosh, you know, I do not have thick skin. I will not be able to take criticism. <laughs> oh God. Uh, but you know, at the same time, you have to be able to get the critique to move into something better. And I know that's true because uh, I've, I've had that even on this channel. You know, there's people that have said things that may have sounded harsh, but they moved me in the right direction. And um, I just want to tell you guys, <laughs> I really am very susceptible to suggestion. So uh, be careful when you comment to me because I might just do it. If you said, Stephanie, jump off a cliff i might just do it so somebody and you probably know who you are and i don't know but said uh, i needed to go with a shorter hairstyle and so it's, i've been obsessed with it in my mind should i cut my hair should i not cut my hair should i cut my hair should i not cut my hair so um got a hair appointment on saturday we'll see i actually might tell her to cut my hair <laughs> i have had this style for a really long time and i think i might be ready for a change but um I wasn't thinking about it until I got a comment. So comments really, they're, you know, really are a conversation between us. And I feel like I have a whole bunch of new friends that are just so in sync with me. I mean, I'm in sync with you, you're in sync with me, and it's really fun. So that's pretty much all I have to share. And um, I'm enjoying fall. And I'm ready. I still haven't switched my closet over. A lot of you said just wait until it gets colder. And I'm kind of in that boat. But it's starting to get colder and I want to wear boots. And I almost bought a pair of boots. And I thought I can't buy any boots until I see what boots I have. I don't remember. What do I have? And so I'm going to pull out all my boots. And that way I won't. Do you ever do that in changing season? You end up buying something you already had. I've done that. I've done that. No new boots until I look at the boots I have. But I usually gift myself a new pair of boots each winter. And at this point, I have quite a collection. I don't wear them all. They ha I have my favorites. Um, they don't all make the you know favorite list, but I do have my favorites. And I'm, I'm only interested in purchasing new that is going to be a favorite. Which, of course, what does it mean? Comfortable. And cute. Don't forget that part, it has to be cute. Can't just be comfortable, both. So what are you up to? Are you ready for a fall and winter? Are you ready for that? And uh, are you changing your sewing plans for the season? I'd love to hear what you're working on. So leave me a comment. And if you haven't taken the time to read some of the other comments from the other people, do take a look because there's just some great things that we could have some great conversations going with all of us. Don't you wish we could all just get in a room and just gab? Wouldn't that be fun? I think it would be fun. Thank you so much for watching and stopping by and watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and leave a comment and come back for Tuesday. I did a trailer Tuesday. I'm decorating at this point on the trailer. It's almost to the point where there's nothing left to do, but I'm not done decorating for my final walkthrough. So I'm working on that and uh, new things are happening. So if you haven't seen that, actually Tuesday was pretty funny with hubby putting up the backsplash. We laughed and laughed our heads off just watching ourselves on video. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, yes, we could probably have done that an easier way, but we don't do it. We don't do it. We do the hard way. Every time, hard way. If there's a hard way, we're going to do it. Pretty much. 
So come back Tuesday and I'll have some more to share and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Bye now.